Hi guys, let's have some fun and we'll have a look at how do I create a steampunk cog in Affinity Designer. Now if you're into design then you must know about steampunk, it's very popular. Used widely in fashion, design, um, all sorts of things and here's your chance to begin in it. So, let's start with a blank canvas. I've used an A4 print canvas in landscape just because I can. Draw out a circle to 112 millimeters in diameter. If you have trouble sizing it by holding your finger on the iPad as you drag it out with the pen, then use the transform tool. Remembering to lock the width and height in, and height in, to the same measurement. So you get a perfect circle. And that one there you can see is 112 by 112. Gives you a perfect circle. Center that on your canvas so you can see the red and the green lines. The blue dot in the middle, by the way, is my Apple Pencil Touch because I've got Show Touches on in Preferences. So when I touch the screen, it shows up. So don't be confused by the blue circle in the middle. Next, we need to create the shape we're going to duplicate around the circle. This will be the teeth of the cog. This shape will become the teeth of our cog wheel. Designer has its own cog shape, but we want to design our own. So begin by dragging out a trapezoid shape that is 13 by 21 millimeters in size. Next, we will round the corners of the top of the tooth. Now we select the corner tool from the toolbar. The shape will now show a circle on each corner point, and you can see that there. And you'll see in the context toolbar, the corner type shows none at the moment and the radius of zero. We're going to change that. Select the top left point first. In the context toolbar, set the corner type to rounded and the radius to four millimeters. You can see that there. Now repeat the rounded corner process for the top right corner. And you can see already that you've got the rounded tooth at the top there. Next, reposition the tooth so it's centered just above the circle, but not touching it. I have it a little bit too far above where it should be for clarity. And in fact, you, you would be well off to draw that down a little bit, but not necessarily touching the circle. Although it doesn't really matter if it does, but um, it may affect what you're doing later. Just a little bit above the circle is where you want it and centered of course. Next, we need to change the rotation point of the shape so it will rotate around the circle. By that I mean when we place the duplicates around the circle, they will go neatly around the circle, not rotate on the point. First, set the crosshair rotation point to on in the context toolbar. Now that's those little group of tools you can see down there that appear to have no explanation. But that centre one that I'm pointing to is a crosshair. And that's your rotation point. And at the moment you can see that's right in the middle of the tooth. A blue circle will appear around that crosshair tool and a small crosshair, crosshair will appear in the shape. Now we're going to change that. As we want the rotation point to be the center of our main circle, carefully drag the small crosshair point down to the center of the circle. You'll see the red and green lines appear when you reach the center point. And the shape when you rotate it will now, rota will now rotate around the center of the circle. You can see the little crosshair is now in the center of the circle and not in the center of the tooth. We now need to duplicate the shape, the tooth of our cog, and we will duplicate it all the way around the circle. So select duplicate from the edit menu, that's the three dots at the top there and you can see duplicate in the drop down menu that pops up. We will next move the duplicate by a precise amount set in the transform studio. So you've tapped on duplicate and gone back to the main um, project. 
We can set the precise moves by telling designer how many objects we want around the 360 degree circle. And here we want 16 teeth in our cog. So you've opened the Transform Studio. That's the little square icon on the bottom right there you can see. And there's the rotation option and you've tapped on that. And you've got 360 degrees divided by 16, which is the number of teeth that we're going to put around the circle. Now, tap on OK. <clears throat> what it doesn't do is put all 16 teeth around. It puts one tooth. And there, the tooth will appear on the circle as shown. Generally appears on the left, but you can make it appear on the right. But for now, just leave it on the left. Now, what do we do? How do we get that to go around? 16 of them. Repeat the same action 16 times until all teeth are in place. In other words, just duplicate, 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 and around it goes 16 times. Easy. Now, there's all the teeth of your cog. Now, this doesn't, much look, it doesn't look much like a steampunk cog, does it? So we need to add a little grunge and a shape, which I've supplied. They're in the download area of my website, the address of which <coughs> is in the description just below. From the images supplied from my download area, select Cog Head and place it in the centre of the white circle and adjust its size to 112 millimetres. Same size as the white circle, remember? Now we're getting there. Remember, the download area is on my website, shown in the description below, where you can also like and subscribe to my channel, even press the thumbs up. Next, we need to make the teeth look a little grungy. Hmm, they're pretty plain at the moment. So, drag in the circular rust image to the project. Make it the same size as the image. You can see the bounding box there around the image. Now select all the curves that make up the teeth and merge them from the edit menu. So you select all the teeth, you can see on the right hand side there. Then tap on the edit menu up the top, the three dots, and, and then do merge curves. Don't merge them from the toolbar in the layers panel. You must go to edit and then select merge curves. That puts them all in one little um, layer. Now you can see that if you look carefully at the layers panel, drag the circular rust image into the merged teeth layer as a mask layer. So you drag the circular rust PNG, drag it so the line is halfway in the curves group mask and release it. And the teeth will take on the colour of rust. So if you're above or below it, you'll either blank everything out with the circular rust image or you won't see it. It's got to be halfway in it. It acts as a mask. I'm sure you've done this before. Last thing to do is drag out a circle to fill the gap around the circle between the bolt head and the teeth. Make the circle 112 by 112 again and centre it. This might seem counterintuitive because you're actually blanking out the bolt. And there are a number of ways of doing this. But this is the way I've chosen. Now, using the eyedropper to make the stroke of that white circle the colour of the rusty background. Set the fill colour to nothing. Now you can see up in the top of the colour panel there, I've got the stroke set to the colour of the rusty panel by using the eyedropper and I've set the fill to nothing. So all you can see is the circular outside. Now increase the stroke width by about, I don't know, 8.2 millimetres on there or thereabouts, depending, depending on how you've achieved that white circle. You, can, you may need to be bigger or larger, but the stroke circle is to fill the gap between the bolt head and the teeth, 
and you can see that there quite clearly. In my case I had to use 8.2 millimeters and there we have it. There's your steampunk bolt. Now position the band to just above the bottom layer. You can see it's just above the bottom layer otherwise it blanks out the heads of the bolts in my case. You, you will probably have to fiddle with this a little bit to get that exactly right. But I simply placed that layer I made above the bottom layer and it's behind everything but still showing um, and the same colour as the teeth and the bolt head. Your very own steampunk cog. Not at all difficult and a few steps. I hope you enjoyed that. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and thumbs up. Click on the thumbs up to like. I really appreciate it when you do that because if you like the video, it helps me to count them on YouTube.